The Reality of Seducing Spirit I was watching a video on YouTube, and a girl was questioning a Christian, asking him, why has church attendance across the nation decreased over the last 60 years? She implied if the Bible is so true and powerful, why are less and less people attending church? And the gentleman responded simply by saying, well, the Bible told us this would happen, which is another proof of the accuracy of biblical prophecy. He then quoted 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Acts 20, 29 and 30. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, as your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And in this truth, the Bible told us that many will depart from the faith. Paul has told us that people will depart from following Christ. The cause of this departure is because of two reasons, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And if you look at the society today, don't you think that thousands of seducing spirits have been turned loose on the human race in this time leading up to the second coming? And they are working day and night to convince everyone they can depart from the faith of God and His true word. We know the devil is always strategic. He plans very well on the different kinds of methods he will use to attack, and one of the methods is introducing seducing spirits. These spirits have caused many Christians to fall. We cannot deny the fact that this spirit is a spirit that attacks almost every day. This spirit works with full force. It doesn't leave anyone to be. Day and night it is at work. Week after week it is at work. This spirit is a spirit that the devil used in the beginning. Seducing spirits are real and they are working right now in many lives. The problem is that many Christians have become too blind to notice these spirits because it manifests in different forms and different ways. The seducing spirit is a spirit that we need to fight. We have been fighting all other spirits. We have been dealing with powers that are causing evil to happen. We have been directing our prayers to some other evil powers. Now we need to understand the need to avoid the seducing spirit over our lives and doctrines of the devil. There are a lot of different seducing spirits and doctrines of devils out there. There are some which are clearly not of God. For instance, different occult practices. 1 Timothy 4.1 forewarns that Christian nations, once professed from Christ, will no longer accept Christ or build their country on Christ. Christians, therefore, should not be taken by surprise at the vast eruption of occult involvement, New Age mysticism, and Eastern occultism. Behind it all are the seducing spirits and the rulers of darkness of this world. Today we are not focusing on these types of seducing spirits. We are going to focus on the ones you will find in a quote and quote churches. The devil is after the church and its members, and he will fool you if he can. Typically, people think seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils will be so clear to see, but they are not always. Don't insult the devil's intelligence, because he isn't insulting yours. One of the ways seducing spirits and doctrines of devils operate is by giving you the gospel, but with twists hidden in it. They will give you 90% of the truth, but 10% will be corruption. Seducing spirits are lying spirits, and when they take over people, they reverse the truth in their minds and spirits and make it seem wrong. They present things that are false, as if they are truth, and make them sound completely believable. One of these seducing spirits found in today's age is the prosperity gospel. There are peoples whose complete faith and belief in God is built on the things God does for them. You see people saying, I believe in God because He answered my prayers. Is that the true basis of your faith? The fact that God answered your prayers? Let's suppose God didn't answer your prayer. Would you still believe in Him? Do you believe in God because He answered your prayers, or do you believe in Him because He is God and He is the one revealed in the Scripture? 
Is your faith resting on what God does and not who God is? You may want to check whether you are not being seduced by a seducing spirit. A spirit that tries to portray God as a genie in a bottle that you can summon whenever you want and say, Now, Lord, I want you to do this. When Christians are taken over by seducing spirits, they turn against the truth of God and immediately become missionaries for the devil without even realizing they have been seduced. They want nothing more than to rob others of their place in God and cause them to step out of God's will. What is the basis of your faith? The unfortunate thing about profitable faith is that there are so many people who are heartbroken and even angry at God, saying God let them down. God has never let anyone down. True faith in God is worshiping God because of who He is and not what He does. Let me stress this point. There is nothing wrong with praying to ask God to bless you and your business and your endeavors and even pray to God to heal you. I encourage you to do that. There are situations in the Bible when people have done that. Hezekiah and Jabez spring to mind. The issue is when we don't have faith and trust in the will of God. Like Job, we need to be mature Christian and say, Job 1.21, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If God heals you, blessed be the name of the Lord. If God doesn't heal you, blessed be the name of the Lord. If God answers your prayer, blessed be the name of the Lord. If God doesn't answer your prayers, blessed be the name of the Lord. We need to be like Jesus and accept the will of God and say, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So many people have left the faith because of the prosperity gospel. They are angry at God. Stay away from the seduced. The devil works through people who are seduced to destroy others. He uses them to carry out his deceitful works just like the Holy Spirit works through people for good. You may think you cannot be seduced, but the Bible says, Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. You have to be very careful whom you associate with. Jesus said, False Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Mark 13, 22. Seducing spirits will do whatever they can to discourage people and take them away from Jesus and his wonderful work in this last hour. The prosperity gospel is one of the seducing spirits. There are many more. This has been happening to many people in the church. People who desire to know God have been attacked and seduced into another thing. Now is the time for us to start breaking ourselves free from every seducing spirit. These spirits will not come as demons. They would not come in a way that they would be easily identified. They will come in a form that you will never be able to know that you are being seduced. God doesn't want us to give heed to these spirits of seduction. God doesn't want us to focus on these spirits because they will always make us lose our way. It is good to hunger for the things of God. It is good to thirst for the things of the Spirit, but you must be careful that you are not fed with poisons. You must be careful that you are not seduced into drinking poisons. These spirits are always waiting for you in the spiritual realm to give you poisons. They are always there to make you take the wrong thing into your life. Satan used this spirit in the Garden of Eden. Know this, seduction requires you to yearn for something. Seduction requires you to want something. Seduction requires you to look at something for long. The devil waited for Eve to get closer to the tree. If you read the Bible very closely, the devil did not call Eve to follow him to the tree. He waited for her to come close to the tree. The devil asked her questions and told her that they would not die if they took off the tree. You must know how this seducing spirit works. 
for it to work effectively, deception must come first. When deception pushes you to desire something, the spirit takes over. Satan used this method. He used deception first. When the spirit of deception has done its work, the thing which the seducing spirit needed came in. That is desire. The Bible says in Genesis 3, 6, King James Version, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. What again is the character of the Spirit? King Saul was ordered by God to go and destroy the Amalekites, without leaving anyone or anything behind. Saul disobeyed, 1 Samuel 15, 9, King James Version. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile, and refuses, that they destroyed utterly. When Samuel asked why did he do that, Saul said in 1 Samuel 15, 15, King James Version, that, And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. This is the seducing spirit speaking. This spirit always involves God, the Word of God, and what God desires. Of course, God desires that people sacrifice to Him back then, and Saul felt like he should do the same. The seducing spirit overtook Saul. The Bible says, Now the spirit speaketh expressly. This is because of what the seducing spirit can do. This spirit will always involve the Word of God and the things of God to seduce people. When you want to know God, these spirits will come and throw the Word of God at you just to lure you to themselves. Satan came to Jesus using what? The Word of God, but with a twist. This is why every Christian needs to be able to discern the spirit behind everything.